If any of you see your names here, like, don't worry about it. This wasn't me. This was actually my brother. So, like, yeah, don't worry, man. <laughs> it wasn't me. I didn't hit you. Hi. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be going through the history of PvP ever since the inception of, thank you for the subscription, Marlon Joestar. But yeah, since about soft launch, I unfortunately couldn't capture a lot of the earlier comps from like December. As you can see, I did start capturing from March onwards, but like the meta before then was very, very similar. And so this is very much like looking into a relic of the past, right? I wanted to show you guys a whole bunch of different comps and then also talk about the idea is behind them right because uh, like what i've noticed is that a lot of the later bas and pas especially when you started the game recently and you don't have like all of these fancy characters you're really limited to all of the permanent ones i think this could actually potentially help and if not at least for the rest of us veterans it will be a nice trip down memory lane and so with that said let's start looking at a couple of these different comps we can start with the very first one right here on the defense side we've got a stall we've got a mage melt with a tamaki in it and then we've got some kind Kind of double tank into physical damage. So early on, the meta was very, very scattered. Like there was a lot of figuring out still being done. There were some established famous comps. So I'm talking about like the Maho Tamaki stall. I'm talking the Reno cannon, which we actually have an example of down here. And then also the Ninon fan. Ninon, Reno, Tamaki, all are very, very prevalent on the defense side, as well as attack actually. Then for attack, it was very much mage melts. So if I do find one, we will point that out. And so yeah, just looking back through some of these comps this comp up here very much a stall no damage and then i answer with the jun and then a whole bunch of damage and an accelerator such as monica akari back then was enough to take down a four star miyako however this is not possible nowadays and so nowadays we actually do see some comps very similar to this except instead of yui perhaps we have tsumugi something like that right so it's not like it's changed overly much and so the next thing i wanted to talk about was this one over here we've got the reno cannon what a classic right lima yukari mitsuki Reno and Yuki very very famous I personally could not run this because I didn't find Reno until maybe like nine months later and so this comp over here really just like blew up a lot of different attacking comps like if you wanted to fight the Reno comp you had to do it very very specifically for me it was something like this you could take either like a bruiser healer approach to it which is what I did over here or alternatively you could also cleave your way through the Ninon comp was certainly very very prevalent in fighting these Reno comps and then on the other hand I see another type of store down here I don't think these stalls work overly well these days, especially because there are like no threats. Typically, like a Zumugi is already a massive threat. And so against this team too, you could realistically run like Christina, another physical, a Jun, and then two mages. It could be Akari and Skiaru or Skiaru and Kyoka, something like that. But otherwise, like stall comps generally, if you're not prepared for it, it is actually quite good. Like you can see on the left-hand side, I have a Shredder, I've got the Accelerator, and then I've got the Mitsuki who is also providing more Shred, and then Akari as well. Like I said, before Akari and Monica were enough to take down Miyako back then but not today. But an interesting counter actually to all of the stall comps were the Mitsuki and the other units that could actually poison so Eriko these days. The AOE poison just shreds through like each of these tanks they ignore the defense and then like it just gets really spicy combined with the fact that she has an AOE defense down. Great times to be honest and like I ran this team over here into a lot of stalls. All right that was a, that was an interesting one let's have a look so this is a very very classic Tamaki stall. Like you got your Miyako, Kuka, Nozomi, Tamaki as well as Maho. And like I said if you ran like any random comps into this, more likely than not you are probably going to get stalled out. On the other hand, we have something interesting over here. It's not quite a Ninon fan. It's quite close. Typically speaking, instead of a Monika it was a Yuki for the double battery onto the Ninon which would hopefully UB whilst the Mitsuki field is down on the field. And so Ninon combined with the Yuki as well as Saren and Mitsuki this was our earliest like iteration of cleave but in regards to this team comp what you'll realize is that the majority of these characters are a physical and b they can't actually reach that far and so what that means is that you have a bulky-ish front line but if you like backloaded the majority of your units they couldn't get hit and because the majority of the units were physical it was actually quite hard to get over that miyako obviously combined with a whole lot of healing right you got the yukari and then the maho as well as the yui who does get her yubi off surprisingly otherwise when kyoko was released she 
certainly was one of the core units to beat a comp like this. Okay, let's move on. I don't think we actually see those very often today. All right, so here is an interesting defense. We've got three mages and two tanks. Three mages, two tanks was a very, very popular way of like destroying everything pretty much. If it wasn't three mages, two tanks, it was a Nozomi plus Monica plus three mages. And that is what we referred to back then as mage melt. It was really good and essentially it forced everybody to build Kuka because without Kuka, everyone would just get shredded to bits. So yeah, as you can see, two tanks, three mages going into this like quite offensive comp. And so as for me, I just got my ass clapped over here. And so my guys, this is actually one of the earliest mage melt comps that I was just referring to. Tank, Monica for acceleration and big, big damage. Anna, Akari, and Hatsune very very common comp. I got dumpstered by this like so many times I was always molding because I did not have a single mage for like the first three or four months of the game. And then on the other side I also see another variant of the Tamaki stall. This one is a lot weaker than the variant with Miyako like instead of Yukari we do want the Miyako in there because generally speaking Miyako Kuka even till today they are a great pair of tanks because they cover both physical and magical and one of them has a taunt. Although more modern defenses a lot of the time use like New Year's Ray, Jun, and other units like that. Miyako Kuka is certainly a classic and is still very effective. And I see that this was actually my friend, my friend attacking me. It was probably him attacking me. Like, I don't attack my friends, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, don't attack me, guys. All right, so just moving through a few more of these, I see one of the Ninon fans down here. I recognize Yon, one of the developers in the pre-con community, and he is certainly running two very, very meta comps. We've got the Tamaki Soul. It's just got a Jun variant instead of Kuka. It means that this comp has lost its magic defense capabilities and taunt. However, there is now a single target heal. And then down here, we've got a Ninon fan, a very, very classic Ninon fan. As you can see, I just like bruiser and heal it my way through. All right, I'm going to speed ahead a little bit because like I'm seeing very much the same stuff, right? Kuka, Nozomi, Tamaki, Kuka, Nozomi, Tamaki. I was never really a big fan of those comps. Another early mage melt over here with the Yori five star. Whoever this was, they were certainly a whale. Moving through, moving through, and then we started seeing some of these comps. These comps were really, really freaking annoying. And what was really annoying about this one was the cleave as well as the AOE, right? So we've got the Monica, Ninon, as well as Hatsune. And what this meant was that a lot of my frontal units just got really cucked, right? So I'm talking like my Makoto, my Kari, they just got freaking burnt to a crisp. And so depending on the comp, we had to answer with certain different things, right? Whether it be cleaving them back just faster or with more damage, right? But like these days, you can see that the back is exposed, so Halloween Miyako would certainly be a great asset here. Of course, however, after dealing with this cooker with the taunt. Moving through, we've got another big stall. There's no threat here, so this wasn't exactly the strongest one. I see more mage melt. I see more Ninon fans. It like it actually took quite some time for that one to die out. I think at this point, there were a couple of things that we started learning about, which was you realistically wanted at least two tanks on every single team, despite devoting three of them to your Tamaki store. So as you can see, one, two, three. Ideally for me back then anyway, like I would have had the Pekrin over here with the Jun and then some kind of Lima comp down here, whether it be like a Ninon fan and accelerated version or the Reno. However, this guy Zero did manage to defend against me with his offensive comp. Kudos to you, man. Kudos to you. Moving through, moving through, and it looks like we have finally gotten our Kyoka. And so here is where it starts getting a little bit spicy. As you can see, we have the Reno comp over here. And then I have a whole bunch of tanks as well as a Kyoka on the back. Now, this was really funny because Reno hits a lot of people. However, Kyoka is also one of like the longest range units. So she stands really, really far back. So what that meant was that as long as you kept your Kyoka out of range of the Reno, you could actually just stack up on tanks and then the Kyoka would take everybody down by herself. Pretty funny comp and it's pretty ingenious and have a look at this one. So very, very similar idea. You've got a full Ninon fan comp. You've got literally just a Miyako acting as the wall and then a Yukari to heal up that Miyako. And then you've got the Kyoka at the back just firing away her cannons. Literally nobody could touch her and so she just took them down one by one. It was a very interesting meta. I didn't think that Kyoka was actually going to be so impactful, but it turns out that she was. And so I think I had to put a lot of roles in for her. I don't really regret it. 
it. However, at this point for like the next few months, it has been like quite similar. This is probably like one of the most meta defenses I've seen. So we've got a Mage Melt comp, we've got a Reno comp, and then we've got a kind of a variant on the Tamaki stall. So I'm just going to quickly flick through all of these and we'll see if there's anything interesting. But otherwise, as you guys can see, it is very, very much like same, same, right? Mage Melt, Tamaki stall, Reno comp. Mage Melt, Tamaki stall, Reno comp. Tamaki stall, Mage Melt. I'm going to, I'm just going to skip ahead because I can already see that it's all the same. Mage Melt, Physical Melt, which is pretty interesting. Reno, Mage Melt, and let's, let's just keep going. Let's have a look at something that's a bit more spicy, which is Ilya. Ilya is an interesting one. So yeah, about here is the start of Ilya. Let me put it this way. Ilya was never really meant to be on defense because generally speaking, a comp is built around Ilya. And so if you can snipe down that Ilya, then it's freaking GG. And that's exactly what happened here. As you can see, we've got the Ninon Cleave, but we also got the Arasa shooting off that skill one or skill two, I can't remember. That one arrow that hones in into that Ilya and then the Ilya just instantly drops within the first three seconds. So yeah, interesting times. But otherwise, as you can see from my friend Berserk over here, Ilya very much crushed like every single store defense, uh, even though that's not stall. It's just kind of like every single defense, right? This one over here, there is virtually no frontline. We've got a Tamaki over here, but the Ilya 5-star was just enough to like actually crush all three of those frontal units. Very much the Cleave Queen at that point in time. And so throughout these next few months, what we do see is essentially a lot of Ilya, a lot of like the decrease in Makoto's, Kauri's, and other frontal units because they just can't deal with all the Cleave between Ninon, Reno, and Ilya now. And of course, because the majority of these comps were like front until cleaves. We definitely saw the rise in like Kyoka on attack. We saw the rise of potentially even Yui's, Mahos, Hatsune's, as well as Archers. As you can see, my Suzuna, Suzuna, Shiori, very, very common Archers that I'd be taking in. You do see Makoto, Kaori, but that's because there is no cleave on the right-hand side. Very, very interesting time. And I don't think that there was overly much of a shakeup until Tsumuki came along. So with that, I'm just gonna scroll through real quick. And yeah, it's actually looking very, very same, same. Okay, so I see Misato over here. And the reason I wanted to bring up Misato is because the Misato stall was very, very much a breath of fresh air into the traditional stall comps. Like I said, there is actually no threat there. Like there is nobody on this team that is going to possibly kill anyone on my team. But if I didn't know that this was going to be a stall comp, a Misato stall, running into a blind, I would have probably lost almost 100% of the time. So as you can see, I do have an answer over here. It is a full stall, so I'm going full shred, full attack. Jun for the defense down, two physical attackers, more defense down from Makoto, and then Akari and Kyoka over there as well. But otherwise, moving through, moving through. Misato, Misato's impact wasn't like crazy, crazy. Like Ilya certainly made me mod way harder than Misato did. However, Misato did offer a counterplay to Ilya. And what that counterplay was, was actually this one right here. So it was essentially two mages, Kuka up the front, Misato and Maho. And because Misato is essentially constantly healing the front line, and with Kuka being a magic tank, and everybody else standing back, we've got the Ilya being gated by the Kuka really, really freaking hard. And so for me personally, who did not have Ilya, Misato was certainly a godsend. But otherwise, moving through, moving through, there isn't overly much that's different. Oh, this one over here. Okay, so as you can see, this is a traditional Ninon without the Yuki. And the reason that people ran this comp over here was because they were expecting Ilya's. And so how this comp would go against an Ilya comp would be that Ninon is at the front because Lima is still going to wait to run in. The Ilya is going to chunk the Ninon for so much damage that she gains so much TP and combined with the Saren, she is going to get her Yubi off instantly with the Mitsuki field down and all of that hopefully instantly killing the Ilya on the opposing side. The purpose of the Maho was to make sure that the Ninon lived because Ilya just did a lot of damage. But yeah, otherwise this was a very, very stable time. Like everybody kind of had the same comps. Ninon was certainly very, very prevalent, and Yui, funnily enough, was as well. Especially because, like, with Misato as well as Yukari, like, healing started to get out of hand, right? Like, like, look at that. Again, if you blind hit into this one and you don't know what you're going into, this is going to stop 99% of comps. But otherwise, we've talked about generally, okay, no, we haven't. This one over here. This comp over here is what we referred to as Turbo Suzuna. And the idea was that the Yukari would juice up the Suzuna in terms of TP, and then the Monica would make everything just go so much faster. With the double threat in the back line, they would hopefully chunk the two tanks up the front. Generally speaking, if this team had a Miyako Kuka, the Suzuna would actually kill off the Kuka very, very fast, and then the Kyoka would follow up right after to cuck the Miyako. Another very, very strong comp 
comp, but this time for both offense and defense. Moving through, moving through. I don't see overly much that is new. I do remember there was a Turbo Eeyore. Actually, it's right here. Turbo Eeyore was another really annoying one. Very, very similar concept. We've got the Yukari going over to the Eeyore. And at this point in time, it was actually really, really tough to catch that Eeyore because Eeyore, most people's Eeyores were at three stars. And so what that meant was that it was quite hard to actually use Tamakis to get in there. On top of that, back then, and I don't know if this actually works now, but the Nozomi and the Monica combo, all of that action speed from Monica, as well as the TP gain from getting hit for the Nozomi, usually meant that Nozomi got her Yubi off before anyone else, and so she would taunt Tamakis. This comp was like really freaking annoying, especially because of the charm from Eeyore. <laughs> And considering I didn't have Eeyore either. And so here I see Summer Pekarin. Summer Pekarin, she didn't like add overly much to the game, to be honest. What it felt like was Ninon, but a shorter range, but on crack. And that is certainly what I used it for. As you can see over here, I am fighting a traditional Reno Cannon. Typically speaking, you could just run a Ninon comp, a Ninon fan into it, and it would win. But I decided to be a little bit bougie. And then so we've got the big, the parasol sweep thing, and then it would just sweep up that Reno as well. I just realized that I think this was only possible because there was a Nozomi over here. I actually can't remember if this would work if there was a Lima here. On the other hand, for Pekarin on defense, it just didn't really work that well, especially because of like the same reasons that Ilya doesn't work too well. As you can see over here, generally she is going to be walled off by the front. You just take some backliners. That Summer Pekarin is never going to touch anybody in the back line. Without a Lima, that is. And Lima interaction with Miyako. Miyako just provides that extra distance to make sure that the Summer Pekarin is not going to reach the back. All right, so moving on. I still see, oh my god, this is Turbo Eeyore. Turbo Eeyore is so freaking painful. Moving through, I believe that, oh, here we go. These ones, okay. So for a small period of time, and we're actually getting to modern metas over here, but for a small period of time, people were using the Summer Kokoro in the Tamaki stall, or it just in a stall in general. Because as we know, Summer Kokoro can actually do a full heal. And that was, um... It was actually really, really freaking annoying. However, what I wanted to talk about were these comps over here. So, although Reno comps kind of died out, we started seeing Reno again when Tsumugi was released. So this is the start of like very, very common comps, even the ones that we see today. Miyako, Kuka, or any two tanks, whether it be like New Year's Ray and Nozomi, or Jun and Pekarin, or whoever. Then we've got Tsumugi herself, Yukari, and then Reno. Now this was very interesting because of the Tsumugi pull and push mechanics. And generally speaking, against comps like this, you wouldn't be able to run overly many frontliners. Thank you, you, for becoming a member. Wow, that's a live shout out. And so yeah, that's quite an interesting one. There were a lot of different counters, a lot of different variants, but what was certainly constant is the fact that you had two tanks, Zumuki, Yukari, and Reno. However, shortly after, we actually do see this Reno kind of setup die out for some reason. But it does take a while for it to die out, actually. If I keep scrolling down, you're gonna see it is quite prevalent. We're at level 110 there, and it is only at about here where they start dying out. So with the release of Halloween Shinobu as well as Halloween Miyako. Halloween Shinobu's impact was quite big. It's quite big because it made Cleaves really, really freaking good again. So generally speaking, when you combine Halloween Shinobu with the Ninon and the Mitsuki, things would die and they would die really, really fast. And then on the other side of things, we've got units like Halloween Miyako. And Halloween Miyako forced people to put a really tanky backliner. For me, at this time, it was Kurumi. But if you wanted to run mages, you had to run Maho, and Maho would most of the time stop this Halloween Miyako from assassinating all of your mages. However, running Maho meant that you couldn't run Kyoka because Kyoka is behind Maho, so Maho wouldn't be protecting her. And that is essentially where we are up to in terms of the meta right now. We've got the Halloween Shinobu, we've got the Skiaru. Skiaru was certainly impactful because you guys saw how much we were using Kyoka early game. And honestly, we just literally could not get enough of Kyoka. And having Skiaru, which was pretty much a secondary Kyoka, was just so incredibly helpful. It also meant that our mage melts were very, very strong. We've got double defense down from Akari as well as Skiaru and then Kyoka bringing in the big guns. Moving through, moving through, Summer Suzume. Summer Suzume was okay, but she wasn't overly impactful. So as you can see over here with all of these Halloween Miyakos, we have the Mitsuki on the back tanking. Now, this one, I don't know how this freaking worked. It probably was because of the Kuka taunting the Halloween Miyako, but that Skiaru, oh, okay, I know why it worked. Because the Tamaki was hitting my Skiaru, giving her a whole bunch of TP. And with that additional TP, she was able to take down the enemy Miyako before she died. And most of the time, I'm pretty sure she died. So moving through, moving through, this is a really interesting one. And the reason that it's interesting is because this guy was able to use the concepts of frontal cleave as well as covering your behind. So using the Yuki to cover up his mages and his
his archer, and then also playing ranged characters so that my Halloween Shinobu was not able to reach anyone but that Nozomi. It's honestly a fantastic answer, like this answer over here on the right hand side was great against my defense. Moving on, moving on, what is this? Rest assured that Blue Archive is in good hands. <laughs> I don't know what that's doing there. But yeah, that's pretty much like almost at the modern meta, right? Because the only thing that changes from here is the fact that everybody ends up with a five star Zumuki. And if we have a look at like PA as well as BA these days, there is probably not going to be a single comp that does not have a Zumuki in it. However, with the release of UEs like Yukari, Nozomi, Pekrin, etc., like it is shaken up a little bit more however my guys i will leave that for another day because we have run this video for way too long now so stay tuned my guys on how pvp has been affected by the release of unique equipments wow that was a that was a long one but it's time to ask you guys a question is this kind of development very, very similar to what you guys saw in your PvP bracket? Or are you guys actually at like some other certain stage? Perhaps we're still in like the Tsumugi with the Renos? Or people are even deadass using like your Mage Melts on defense, something like that. On the other hand, share with us some of the comps that you are seeing that has not been posted here. I know I've missed some such as like Halloween Masaki for me is the most obvious one. Let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up dropping a message, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video and this is a long one so thank you guys so much but otherwise if you did like this video then please consider a like and if you would like to subscribe then uh wait that doesn't does that work please subscribe then but otherwise as your girl halloween shinobu once said all good things must come to an end and thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye